So anyway, with this episode, we're going to try something a little bit different today. Um, we're going to do like a Q&A session. Throughout the years, I've gotten a ton of questions about traveling. And today I'm going to answer some of those questions. And we'll do these episodes like periodically or so. And it'll be about five questions to try to keep it short. Because I'm already long-winded as it is. And if I do like 10 questions, <laughs> this episode will be an hour long. So with no further ado, let's start with question number one. Question number one is, what made me start to travel in general, even more so internationally? Uh, basically, I felt as if something was missing in my life. And I'm a little bit older now, so you start to get to those little midlife crisis ages. And in our society, so to speak, there's certain things that we're supposed to do, certain things we're supposed to accomplish by a certain age. The American dream tells you that by the time you're such and such an age, you should be married, you should have kids, you should have a house, you should have a two-car garage, a fence. You're supposed to have went to college, got your degree. You're supposed to have this great pan job. Just this picture perfect TV shit that's just not real. Or at least at one point it may have been real in the past, but it's just not real for a bunch of us anymore. But it still doesn't mean that the pressure isn't there. Our family, your friends, and everybody else, if you're not doing the American dream, then people want to look at you like you're weird or you're strange. And it does get to you even on a subconscious level sometimes. So I felt as if something was missing in my life and I started questioning saying you know why haven't i done this or i haven't done this or i said i was going to do this or i was supposed to accomplish this by now and so i felt like something was missing and i discovered a passion through traveling it started with me going to a couple cities the first city i went to was uh cleveland i went up there for a stellar game and one of my friends used to live up there and so i asked him you know when i get off the greyhound what do i do where do i go to get to the game get to the stadium and he helped coach me through it and on. So then I started building my courage and my confidence up. And I started going to other places like Cincinnati, D.C., New York, Boston, uh, Houston, San Antonio, Miami, Orlando, Tampa, and so on. So as I did it, I found out I loved it. I love to see new places, new city, new people, all of those different things. It's something that you can't, because there's only so much that you can do in Pittsburgh. And it gets boring. You know, somebody else visiting Pittsburgh for the first time, they may love it. But for me, I'm so tired of Pittsburgh, y'all. So with that said, um, you know, I just started wanting to travel more in general. So one day what happened was I said when I get my income tax check, I was going to uh, go to L.A. And I started planning, looking into things. And I was like, or maybe I should go to New York because I hadn't been there before. And I started planning, looking into things, looking like at both cities at the same time. And then one day a light bulb went off. I was like, why don't you just go overseas? And, you know, a lot of times that's just talk, something that you say out of your mouth and you don't actually do or accomplish. But I was like, you know, what? I'm going to go ahead and do this. That's where I'm going to go. I'm going to go overseas. So my thing was, well, where am I going to go? Um, actually, we'll get to that part in a second question. So anyway, I took my income tax check and I paid for my plane tickets and stuff. And then I started looking at Airbnbs and I started looking at things to do. And like one of the things I'm very, very meticulous with traveling. So and I did it. I got my passport. It said it would take four to six weeks. I only had a month. Um, I didn't pay for the $60 expedited fee. I was just praying to God that this passport arrived in time. And thankfully it did. It arrived 13 days later without even paying for the expedited fee. So, you know, I went over there and then my life has changed ever since. You know, like this is where I find my passion and my purpose. It's something that I enjoy. I like going to other places because I like to see other cultures. I like to see other societies. Often in our lives, we're just around the people the same people every single day. And we only know what we know. And we, a lot of times, what we know is our culture or our demographic or the people that we're around every day. So let's just say, for example, somebody's racist. They're racist a lot of times because they just don't know any better. Or they're racist because they had one, two, or three, or however many experiences. Let's say if it's somebody that doesn't like black people, for example. It's just because either that's been what they told, that's what they've been told. It's because people perpetuate stereotypes. They tell you, this is what black people do. And then they see those actions from black people and they're like, yep, it's right, it's true. But they're not telling the other half. They're not telling the other half about the other black people who don't do that, or they're not going on a deeper level explaining to you why black people might do that. Sometimes it's just a part of their culture and you don't understand it because it's not part of your culture or the lingo, whatever, whatever it might be. So by going to different places, meeting new people, expanding your horizons, trying new things, I think it helps make you a more full and complete person, no different than when, you know, you were in college. When you go to college, you don't just focus on classes for your degree. You also focus on classes for 
to make you a better person or more well rounded more excuse me, more well rounded person. And sometimes don't get me wrong, I think colleges just do that to milk more money from you instead of focusing on your degree. But I do think a lot of those different classes you take in college does help to make you a more well rounded person. <laughs> I almost didn't want to say it again because I was gonna get tongue tied. So anyway, that was one of the main reasons why I wanted to travel because I found a passion and I love it. And it's something that I want to continue for the rest of my life. Question number two, how do you decide where to go? Um, I want to go everywhere. If it was up to me, I want to visit every single place on this entire planet, even Antarctica, if I could. Um, a lot of times I may have some, I may have, I have a long list of countries that I want to go to, but I may have say five or six that I want to go to next. And then sometimes, even though I had those five or six, something comes up. I may be looking for a plane ticket to somewhere else, and then I see a cheaper price for something else. Like for example, I'll give you an example. When I went to Belize earlier this year, um, Alaska Airlines had to buy one, get one free sale. So you buy one ticket, you get another ticket for free. So I looked at the list of options. It was Mexico, it was the United States, it was Hawaii, um, but they also had uh, Belize in there. And I was like, you know, I always like to be different. So I don't like doing what everybody else does. You know, and a lot of times when people travel in the US, if they travel somewhere internationally, it's always like Mexico, Bahamas, uh, Puerto Rico, um, you know, different places like that. Like a lot of times you don't hear people say Belize. People know Belize and they say it, but like, I don't know a whole bunch of people that's just like been a Belize. So I always wanna try something different. So in that case, the price was right. It was something that nobody else was doing. And so I said, you know, I'm gonna to go to Belize. Um, a lot of times, you know, things come up. Some, like for when COVID happened, for example, uh, you know, I had some places that I was supposed to go and those places got canceled. I started looking around for something else. Like when the trip to Morocco got canceled, then I was gonna to go to Budapest, then that one got canceled. Then I was gonna to go to, um, um, Montenegro and different places like that and it just kept getting canceled so I mean it really just depends uh, I know for the first trip when I went overseas I went to the United Kingdom as my first place because I figured that they all speak English if I'm going to put myself in a vulnerable situation and travel overseas I wanted to go somewhere where everybody else speaks the same language at least initially so I could try to get the hang of it versus my second trip on that same trip I went from London and I caught the train to Paris and when I got to Paris, it was like a whole nother road there. Everything was in French. And I took two years of French in high school, but I didn't remember any of that shit, <laughs> you know? So it's like, that's what I was worried about. And that's what I was concerned about. And that's why I went to the United Kingdom first. So each trip is just different. It really just depends on the situation and the circumstances. Sometimes I have an idea in mind. Sometimes something comes up. Another thing, just because of COVID, um, and trips kept getting canceled. I was uncertain the governments of the world was going to do because, you know, they got all out of control and, and, and crazy. But this whole COVID thing, the lockdowns and restrictions and vaccinations and uh, COVID protocols and everything. So after a couple trips got canceled, I was kind of scared to go overseas because you just never know what they were going to do next. Um, I think there's some other ulterior motives behind all of that, but I'm not going, that's a conversation for another channel or something else. Uh, but anyway, so when the whole COVID lockdowns, I started traveling more in the U.S. Like during COVID, that's when I went to Phoenix. That's when I went to Alaska, um, Miami, Atlanta, Boston, New York. Um, so I started saying, you know, my whole thing was just to travel internationally. But since the COVID stuff, I'm not going to let that stop me from traveling. So I started going everywhere else in the United States. Next up, are you afraid of traveling solo or doing dangerous bucket list stuff? Um, no, I'm not afraid of traveling solo at all. Actually, I love it. Um, it doesn't bother me at all whatsoever. Um, I think traveling solo helps build up your confidence and your courage level. There are certain things in life that when you do it and you accomplish it, it builds your confidence up, you know, and that goes to the second part with the bucket list though. Traveling is a bucket list thing, but there are some dangers in traveling alone. You know, somebody can make you an easier target because you're by yourself or something happens. Sometimes two hits are better than one. So there's a lot of different things. As far as the bucket list stuff, um, I think this by far the scariest thing on the bucket list I ever did was going skydiving. 
um, I was absolutely terrified of going skydiving. If you had talked to me a couple years ago, it's just something that I wouldn't even have considered doing. Uh, you know, I tried to get some of my other friends to do it and nobody else would do it with me. But I don't know, as I've gotten older and I think maybe traveling has been a part of it, it's kind of made me conquer some of my fears. So I've been less afraid to try a little different things. So since then, you know, I've every time I take a trip somewhere, I try to do a bucket list thing or something that I haven't done before. I think it also keeps you young and youthful. So, I mean, you look at some of the things I did, the skydiving, the hot air balloon, the jet ski, the zip lining, um, um, the canoeing, uh, walking with the glacier thing. Just each time I try to do something a little bit different. Uh, am I afraid? Yes, I'm afraid in a sense of I don't want to get hurt. Obviously, if the parachute doesn't open, it's over for me and there will be no more travel. There'll be no more anything for that matter. Um, but if you do it and you survive it, it's such a, it's a confidence booster. It's a confidence builder. And also, you know, I don't think I'm ever going to be rich and be a millionaire or multimillionaire. So what I always try to tell people is you don't have to be rich to have rich experiences. And I also stress to people, so many people try to play it so safe, you know, um, you just got to kind of put yourself out there. You know, you don't have to do what everybody else does. You don't have to do more importantly, you don't have to do what everybody else around you is doing because we like to stay in this little comfort zone. And we don't want anybody judging us or criticizing us. And you got to break free from those shackles and break free from those people and just do your own thing and find you. You know, so it's, a, it's an ongoing process that you have to go through for the rest of your life for that. Next up, number four, how do you afford to travel and aren't you wasting money on things that can be used on something more important? I've had people say this to me before. I've actually had a lot of close friends. Sometimes I think they'd be hating, but then some of them, you know, in my opinion, you know, unless they're like genuinely concerned, I honestly think that they need to just mind their business because I could think of 10 different things that each of them, each of, I could think of 10 different things that each of them are doing that um, they probably shouldn't be doing either or that they could be doing better. But that's neither here nor, oh my God. <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. Okay, so, the thing is, man, I could get diagnosed with cancer tomorrow. Um, you know, when COVID first came out, there was a lot, we lost a lot of little different people. And I feel like people try to play it too safe and too close. And people try to be so uptight, either with their time or their money. Some people are so afraid to do the least little anything because they're worried about the consequences. And we're like, I just want to be able to live and enjoy life. In my opinion, life is not meant to just work and pay bills every 30 days. You have so much structure, you have so much rules, and where does that come from? That comes from other people or that comes from society. You don't have to be like me and take multiple trips per year and everything. Everybody has to do what fits right for them. But you know, I've been criticized and I've been attacked throughout the years, like, oh, you're spending and wasting all your money up traveling and this and that. Okay, and what are you doing, for example? You know, um, as I've said previously in another video, you could be literally blowing all your money up in smoke because all you do is spend your money on weed every day. That's your choice. That's your business. That's up to you. But let me travel. Mind your business. You know, um, you never know. People save up a pension. People save up money all the time and try to. And, 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 and that's not that it's a bad thing. I mean, that's a very good thing. But at the same time, the stock market could crash or economy or society can um, implode. We could lose our status as the real reserve currency. And then all that money that you saved up while you thought that you were being so smart. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing because it, it's a good thing, but you could lose it all overnight. And then you're going to be so depressed. You're probably going to be even almost suicidal if you lost your 401k or if you lost your life savings. You know what I'm saying? You got to learn to balance it a little bit, bare minimum balance it a little bit. You can have a savings, but at the same time, you need to be able to have some fun and play sometimes too. Don't be one of those rigid, trying to always play it safe and be so structured people. Like, get out there, live, and enjoy life while you have the time. You could be in a car accident tomorrow and be in a wheelchair for the rest of your life. Enjoy life while you can and do things while you can because it's not guaranteed. And as they say, when you die, you can't take that money with you anyway. Balance is key. And last of all, do you prefer traveling solo or with someone else? That's a bit of a tough one for me. Um, I've done both. 
multiple times. I honestly think that I prefer to travel solo. Um, I'm kind of a loner in a lot of ways. I have very few close friends. I have, I can count on one hand the amount of close, close friends that I have. Um, I'm kind of, I, I kind of have like these little walls built up in a way. And so like, it takes time to build, I mean, it takes time to knock those walls down and it takes a very special and deserving person or deserving people. So traveling with somebody and I'm used to traveling alone most of the time, it's cool, but I prefer honestly, if it's the right person. And a lot of times you don't know if it's the right person until you actually travel with said person. Um, some of the things that I don't like with traveling with other people is I want to do whatever it is that I want to do when I want to do it. And I hate to have to compromise. You know, sometimes you may want to go to an event or do something that somebody else wants to eat. They say, I'm hungry. When I go on trips, I'm like burning the rubber. I'm going from this tour, this activity to the next tour. I'm getting up the next day, no matter how late I was up, if I'm hungover. I'm just kind of like vacation isn't relaxation for me because I got uh, everything so meticulously scheduled. So if you go on a trip with me, I try to tell you from the door, like I got all this stuff planned. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to. If you do, we can do it. But don't feel pressure, but at the same time, don't hinder me either. If I get three tours in one day and you say I'm doing too much, then go by yourself and do your own thing. I'm not here to babysit you and you're not here to babysit me. You know what I'm saying? If you, if I wanna go out, but you say that you're tired, just cause you're tired don't mean that I gotta stay in a hotel with you. If you wanna go to sleep or you wanna get some rest, go and get your sleep, go get your rest, but don't try to guilt trip me because I wanna get back out there. You feel as if like you're missing something if you don't go with me, but you wanna go to sleep, I'm going out there. And then people say, well, oh, you're going out there with somebody, what if something happens to you? Well, something could happen to them too. They could have stayed back at the hotel and the roof could have collapsed on them, anything, you know? But I just don't like nobody to cramp my style, especially like when I'm on a trip. I wanna see as much of this country or as much of this city as I can during that time. Um, another thing is with me traveling, there's some things that I'll splurge on and there's other things that I don't. When I take a trip, I pay for everything in advance. I never, I heard, when I go on a trip, mainly without my spending money is to be on food or drinks or liquor or whatever. That's about it. Or souvenirs or something if you decide to buy it. Before I even step foot into another country, the hotels are paid for, the planes are taken care of, the, the uh, tours are taken care of. And even if I can buy like a gift card for a restaurant in advance, or if I see something on Groupon for an event or something, I try to pay for about 90 to 95% of everything before I even get to that country. Why? Because that way you have more spending money to work with. Like if you're sitting there going to the other country and then all of a sudden you decide to pay for four tours while you're there, you're going to spend the money that you could already took care of all of that in advance. So anyway, I have different things that are like priorities for me. and having to deal with somebody else or even like okay another situation for example um when i was in paris i almost missed the plane everything that could have possibly went wrong went wrong that morning and i woke up i left the airbnb like three and a half hours in advance but i still almost missed that plane because everything went wrong trying to get the train uh the one person i asked what way to go, he told me the wrong way. So then I had to get off the train, go back to the original stop. Then I got on the train, went to the new one. There was a fork in the road. The train I was on went to the right when I was supposed to go to the left. So then I went back to the part where the fork was at and then I was standing on the wrong platform. So then the train that I was supposed to catch to the airport went by. I had about less than an hour before my plane was about to leave. I called, it, I called an Uber. Got me to the airport. I'm running, <laughs> running for my dear life. I got on the plane with like six minutes to spare. Um, so even situations like that, when I'm in a tight bind, sometimes I need to focus. I don't need somebody else next to me. Blah, 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 blah. Now, sometimes two minds are better than one, but a lot of times somebody else is just irritating or in the way. And I just like to think and I like to try to remain calm and cool and figure out, OK, What's the next best thing to do? And somebody else is in my ear. It's, it's, it's just like the worst thing in the world. So uh, those are some of the reasons. So I think ideally I like to travel by myself, but I'm not against traveling with other people. You just hope and pray to God that it's the right person. So that's going to wrap it up for our first Q&A session. 
Uh, stay tuned for the next episode. I actually have another episode that's almost completed. Um, I think I just want to go back and add a couple other things, add some more ad libs and audio and different things. I don't know when I'm going to post it, but I think that's going to be part of a two or three part series. It's more uh, travel videos. Um, I'm not going to reveal what that is, but stay tuned. As I always say, we still have a lot more content for you. Um, there's a lot more stuff coming, but it was not going to be like weekly or uh, weekly uploads and things like that because you know i'm doing this for free i'm not getting any money off of doing these videos and then even half the time i always get copyright strikes from youtube all the time um they never really tell you why i guess i'd have to reach out to them to ask them why i don't know if it's because i may be in the car and the radio station might be playing and a rap song comes on and i'm getting a strike because let's say cardi b song came or something it's not my fault. I guess I'm supposed to mute that part out. You know, I ain't go through, read all the copyright stuff, but I'm always getting copyright strikes. Or if it's something, if I use a GIF, or if it's something that I use a background, whatever it is, I keep getting the strikes all the time on the videos. But I'm doing this just because I'm passionate about it and I love it. Like, there's nothing more, honestly, in my life that I enjoy more right now than travel. So um, I'm not just doing this for you. I'm also doing this for me. Because this is like a stress reliever. This is like a there's so much joy that can be brought into your life when you find a passion but there's other things that i need to find passion about as well but anyway um, i've talked long enough i'll see you next time on the next episode and once again like subscribe and thank you once again for watching uh ken's travels